What's up guys, Nick Shaw from the Baseball Box here to talk about my three pet peeves as an infielder and it has nothing to do with mechanics. All right, three pet peeves. Now, number one, standing around. Number two, being late to bases. And number three, taking a bad prep step. All right, now I'll get into each one very briefly but I wanna tell you why they're my pet peeves and they have nothing to do with ability. Okay, number one is not being where you need to be. Okay, what I mean by that is if the ball is not hit at you, chances are in this game, especially playing infield, there's some place to be, whether it's backing up a throw or covering an unoccupied base, there is always, always, always somewhere to be. For example, if I'm playing shortstop and there's a ground ball to the third baseman, a bad infielder will kind of just watch the ground ball go to third. All right, a good infielder will break to that ball. If it kicks off the third baseman, which you've probably seen in the big leagues, short stops right there in the whole bare hand, you still have a chance to throw him out there. The other thing it does is if it kicks off him and it happens to go to his right, we can keep that base runner, the hitter, off second base just by being where I need to be. Also, if I back that up, he catches it, he makes a throw to first, I have to be prepared to cover second base. Think about it. A good second baseman is going to be backing up that throw. If the throw gets by, the runner, the hitter, will be trying to advance to second base, so I need to be there on the unoccupied base. Last example I'll give, playing shortstop, base runner on second base, base hit to left field, third baseman is the cutoff, I need to be at third base, another unoccupied base. Bad infielders will just kind of stand here and watch the play go, and then our base runner will take a big turn and end up getting shut down, and now we have no chance to get him out there on the big turn. Number two, pet peeve, being late to bases. Two examples I'll give, the double play ball. All right, if I'm late getting there to second base, chances are I might not get this out and I definitely won't get that out, okay? Most times my other infielder, the infielder that fielded it will pump fake, pump fake, wait for me to get there. It changes his timing and a lot of times that throws sails, okay? A lot of times that will throw your timing off as well coming across the base and the entire double play is kind of squashed. The second example, saw it in the big leagues about a week ago, being late on a steal. I need to be in a position to get there on time. As soon as he breaks, I see him. I bust it as hard as I can and get to that base. There was a play in the big leagues where the throw went up the line, it hit the runner and ended up squirting by. I should have been there on time for a catch and a tag to get the out. So be there on time and that goes with positioning. I cannot be too far away from the base if I need to get to second base for a double play or a steal. Number three, a bad prep step. Now this is the guy that kind of just leans forward and hops and stays there every single pitch, the same exact prep step regardless of the pitch type. As I've talked about before, if it's an off-speed pitch, I should be prep stepping pull side. Okay, chances are I'm playing the percentage that that pitch is going to hit pull side more than it is the other way or even straight up, which I'm taking the prep step on the fastball. Okay, last thing on the prep step, if a good prep step is taken and then I don't break based on the swing where the ball is going or where the swing looks like it's going, to me that is also a bad prep step. So taking the pitch into consideration, prep step based on that pitch, then I'm taking a break off the swing on that pitch. Okay, Those are my three pet peeves. Let's get rid of them.